You know, Paramount is Disney without the parks. Paramount is at the edge of bankruptcy, needing someone to buy them out. And it's what would be happening to the mouse if not for Disney World and Disneyland, because just the same as Paramount has stood at the edge of utter wokeness, so too has been Disney. And so perhaps Paramount, with their crazy, zany, recent earnings call, is the canary in the coal mine for Bob Iger and all the other companies who are going woke and dot dot dot, you know the joke. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel. We are ever, ever thankful that you are here with us because you are the gigawatts and you are here to power a video of excellence as we talk about what is going on in the zany halls of Hollywood where apparently they have lost all sensibilities and realize now, perhaps, that money does not grow on woke trees. No, it grows out of the wallets of consumers who just want normal, everyday, great content that they can settle into at home and oh, by the way, they'd like for their kids not to be proselytized by ideologues while they're away. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Let's get back to that. But Paramount did not realize that until it was too late. Perhaps a casualty of both DEI wokeness and the move to streaming. Is it the first streaming casualty? One of perhaps many? Well, folks, we'll tell you all about it right now. Uh, here's what we've got out of Paramount. This off of IGN by Alex Stedman. Came out uh, yesterday. Paramount refuses questions on earnings call and blasts the Mission Impossible theme song after CEO exit. Mission Impossible. Sorry about the way we phrased that. Uh, put that in quotations next time. Help me on IGN. But um, what I would say is that we're only one degree of separation from Disney. Bob Iger didn't take like live questions. Bob Iger took robot questions pre-selected with a robot AI voice. And none of us know, you know if it's real or not real. So this is, this is not far from where we are with Disney. What does that say to us? Here's the article. Earning calls tend to be pretty standard fare. Not been paying attention to Disney <laughs> earnings calls, I'll say that. An overview of quarterly revenue, maybe some news here or there, and then a Q&A with analysts and investors, usually lasting around an hour. Paramount, however, a company swirly with be big behind-the-scenes moves at the moment, and by the way, possible bankruptcy or being purchased, took a different approach during its Q1 earnings call yesterday. Chris McCarthy. One of three newly instated leaders at Paramount reiterated the main points of the earnings already shared with investors, made some brief comments about their new leadership structure, and then swiftly ended the call after just nine minutes. The company did not take questions and, somewhat hilariously, instead loudly played the Mission Impossible theme song on a loop. Well, that's one way to pivot. The unconventional earnings call came on the same day that Paramount Global announced some big news. Just hours prior, the company confirmed that CEO... Bob Backish, no folks, not of binging with Backish, would be stepping down, replaced by a trio of executives in McCarthy, George Cheeks, and Brian Robbins, who will now collectively make up the office of the CEO. Backish had been with Viacom since 97, becoming CEO in 2016. When Viacom and CBS merged in 19, Backish became the CEO of the combined company, which was renamed Paramount Global. All right, so... question to all of you. And Lou, starting with you, question is, did streaming kill Paramount? Is this the first real streaming casualty? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, look, Backish started out as Top Gun and wound up finding his mission was impossible is what I was going to say. Oh, well played, Lou. <laughs> well played. Look, they, no, they, what? Go, Lou, just to add to your point, and I think you're going the same direction I am, is had they not leaned into streaming like Disney did, they would not be in this predicament. If they had been leasing it to Netflix? I, I, look, it, all they all these media companies had to do was just say, you know what? That's a ton of investment. It won't pay off. We don't know how to effectively monetize it. Subscription models are subject to the you know the whimsy of the economy, and the outlook for the economy is not so rosy right now. I know we're halfway down this road, but let's decide to pull up stakes and sit on it. If the technology is not going anywhere, we own it. Same thing Disney could have done. It's a conversation well, and, and, for another And time. the only positive that they stressed was what? In this quarter, it was the extra ads because it happened to be the Super Bowl quarter. Yeah. No, okay? that was it. That was, that was the only way they made money at all. 
which, which is, of course, a, a great way to point out that you could have an amazing headline and a disastrous quarter, despite what the Walt Disney Company investors seem to be uh, permiss- <laughs> permitting over at their company. Uh, yeah. Pro, there, there is one comment that I would like to make. I, I would just like to straighten everyone out on, on the situation in the media landscape here. So Bob Iger was the CEO of the Walt Disney Company, and then Bob Chapek was Bob Iger's replacement. Bob Iger is now Bob Chapek's replacement. Bob Ch- Bob Bakish, I'm going to have to update this because it's a little old, was the CEO of Paramount Global. Brian you mean Robert, I've been, I, Have I been pronouncing this wrong? Is it Bakish? I don't know. I don't know. Brian Robbins is the CEO of Paramount Pictures, and Brian Roberts is the CEO of Comcast. Here. You know, just, I'm, uh, I'm thinking just want to make that clear and for I'm everybody. I'm thinking Jack Warner, Lou Wasserman, Louis B. Mayer, I don't. I can't think of a single Daryl Zanuck. I can't think of any of them that had a first name starting with a B. Maybe that's just a jinx in the industry. <laughs> I don't well, know. I think I think Roberts <laughs> is a good representative of of Comcast. Yeah, yeah, so. he's the exception. Yeah. yeah, sorry, just just had to interrupt with that that little bit of uh, cultural uh, insanity. Well, I, I want you to interrupt a little bit more, Jonas. I want you to, I need your opinion on this. Do you think that Paramount is a casualty of streaming? Or do you think this is that they're a casualty of something else? Like how much of this is is the changing uh, destruction of Hollywood, right? That paradigm of business. And how much of it is Paramount having done the woke uh, brigade? I remember uh, I remember back when I was writing for Pirates and Princesses doing an article about uh, Paramount having little cartoon creatures from Blue's Clues. That mm-hmm. one of the one of folks don't laugh at this, please. One of the cartoon beavers had mastectomy scars, and and you know I what? I covered that right. This yeah. was Paramount. So how much how much of it is woke? How much of it is DEI? Oh God! Uh, yeah, well I I have to. Uh, Nickelodeon has pretty much destroyed their brand. They were already edgy. They're a lot more open about their uh, their culture war stuff, and in especially in kids content to the point where I don't cover them as much as I cover Disney because it was an it was an assumption when everything woke comes back. Yes, we'll be going over Nickelodeon a lot, a lot more. But yes, that that Blues Clue, Clues Pride Parade where they just went down float by float hosted by Nina West. Um, right. And, and then Disney did it. Yes. Same yeah, thing. So, like this is this is anathema to to winning in the market. So they, they pretty much killed their kids' brand uh, almost altogether. I think Paw Patrol has survived a little bit longer. Um, they have Ninja Turtles, although they have not done a great job with Ninja Turtles because there's been, of course, a lot of a, a lot of the signaling that 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 we all see when they put out these trailers and they make they take April O'Neil and instead of being a, a, a I'd say a white lady in her twenties or thirties that uh, looks like she takes pretty good care of herself instead of being a, a, uh, a woman in her, I don't want to, I don't know. Have what you, have you seen like. this latest She's Scooby-Doo thing ugly. from Velma Jonas? Well, a little bit of what they've done. <laughs> that's, in Velma, but that's, those, that's a story for another day, but is, oh my is that gosh. Paramount? But, but you look at everything that they're doing with the things that should be the staples of their, of their their company they even ha- managed to produce yellowstone but in the streaming space they they really screwed that up because yellowstone ended up being a win for peacock because peacock had the exclusive rights to yellowstone first run on streaming so when it, they, they even had their own paramount app that was not paramount plus by the way showtime they killed showtime as well to the point where the showtime channel is now paramount plus with showtime that is the literal name of the channel now and it's in the premium tier of Paramount Plus. This, yeah, this is, you pay a bump to get Showtime as part of your uh, Paramount uh, they, subscription. They struggle to give this thing away. It's it's not a great streaming service. Not to mention what they have done to Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek, one of the most uh, to call it syndicated at this point to indicate the number of episodes. If you did one episode a week on a podcast talking about Star Trek, you wouldn't have to come up with new content for more than seven years. There is so much Star Trek out there, and they have managed to make it to where people who like Star Trek hate Star Trek. It's the same thing that Disney has done, just in a in a much more pronounced way, because at least in Star Wars, you don't have people gathering together to talk about their gender journey on the show. Um, yes, there was one episode of TNG, notwithstanding. I, I, I cannot rant enough about how Paramount Plus is like this, this concentrated form 
of, of, of if you took Disney and you chopped off the theme parks division and you chopped off ESPN and you just put it right there in that concentrated form, this is essentially what has happened to Disney. But people notice it a lot more because it's just Paramount Plus and they don't have a strong media voice with Bob Iger uh, the way Disney obviously does. Uh, it's by a, the way, about back. Star Trek. Yeah. The original series ended in 69. The first I just got it. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. The first movie, Star Trek, you know, the motion picture, 1979. So even though it was dead and buried for 10 years as far as first run, it had such power and such strength and such fan love that they had to come back with what some will say. I mean, you know, some people jokingly called it Star Trek, the motionless picture. Uh, but 10 years later, and then Spar all of this other wonderful stuff that's come, and now all the dreck. That's how hard you had to fight to kill it. Well, I want to show everybody just how close Disney is to Paramount. As we said, take away the parks. That's been what we've been talking about all show today, folks. There's a, there is a cohesive narrative here, and that is that DEI and Woke is killing the entire industry. The only thing preventing Disney from being at the precipice along with Paramount are the parks, and Disney is working to kill the parks. Whether they're doing it knowingly is a different story. But take a look at this. I want you to see the difference in, in these streaming services. YouTube, 9.7% of all streaming content. Netflix, 8.1%. Go down to Disney+, Plus, 1.7%. Paramount+, Plus, 1%. Disney+, Plus is 0.7% away from Paramount+. Plus. That is tremendously closer inside a single digit percentage versus Disney taking on Netflix, Disney taking on YouTube. You get the idea. I'll just Disney point out is that, far uh, closer to Paramount than they are Netflix. Far, Pl far Pluto closer. is the same company, by the way. Pluto and Paramount Plus are, are both uh, holdings of Paramount Global. So, Well, I'm, I'm trying to keep that apart because it's a little confusing. Disney cannibalizing Hulu. So if we start adding together both of them, we get some wonky kind of stuff. But now, if you remove Bluey, of course, uh, Disney oh. would be even further down the list. Well, we, we can actually figure that out. So, uh, folks, what's one-third of 1 1.7? Somebody run the math real quick in the chat. What's one-third of 1 1.7? And we'll tell you what, what percentage of all streaming on all devices is Bluey. That's how big that show is. That's how yeah. much money it's going to have when its license runs out and Disney has to pay again. Uh, one-third of 1.7... I got a feeling it's going to be somewhere about five point what five point six. Uh, this this handy account yep. right here zero point uh, five seven. Yeah, says zero point five seven percent. Oh, so uh. that's that's the percentage. Bluey on its own is closing in on Pluto. There you but go. But what they have in common, Paramount and Disney Plus, is that the only content that they have that anybody wants to watch isn't theirs, whether it's the Super Bowl or Bluey. And we have come to the end yet again. But folks, it has been a real joy. We hope it's been joyful on your part as well. Sometimes we must cover negativity in the news, but we slap it with positivity in a way that few others could ever comprehend. Folks like, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms, and that notification bell, click it and stick it to the algorithms. Drop a comment down below and help us spread the positivity all around with a community dialogue of your thoughts. And wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and you know the line, keep having fun.